Well, hey there, teachers. Have you ever found yourself making one of these things before? I found myself making it just the other day during lockdown because, you know, hashtag social distancing. Now, as I was making this, I realised it's a fantastic task to set our students. Not only is it a good challenge for them to try and make one, but also it has some brilliant mathematics hidden within it. If you're interested to find out more, hang around until after the intro. Now, if you have ever built one of these card towers before, you will know that it is a brilliant task for building patience and perseverance. I mean, heck, whilst I was building this card tower here, it took me forever, and I almost gave up on a number of occasions and decided to make a video about puppy dogs instead. Because, you know, hey, who doesn't love puppy dogs? Aren't they cute? Now this task is brilliant for building resilience within our students because as you'll know, when they start to build it, it'll fall down and then they'll try and build it again and it'll fall down again and they'll keep doing that and they might even get really close to the end and it'll fall down again. But there's something quite cathartic in this as well as they go through and try to make this thing and get success in the end. But the other thing that I really love about this task is the mathematics that's hidden within it. And I'll show you what I mean. You see, what we can do is we can set the challenge to build the biggest tower that you could possibly build. Now, quick disclaimer here, I actually cheated and used blue tack and sticky tape to make my card tower. If your students are struggling, they might want to do the same thing too. But shh, don't tell anyone. Now, once you've made the biggest card tower that you can make, a really cool mathematical investigation is to explore how many triangles you can see within your tower. Now this might seem pretty easy at first, but in fact, there's more triangles than what you might initially think. For example, when we look at this, you can see there's a number of size one triangles, which clearly stand out. But then we also have size two triangles, and size three triangles, and maybe even larger triangles as well. But I'm not gonna tell you any more about that. I'll let your students explore it for themselves. Now, whilst your students explore this, they might want to record their findings on some isometric dot paper, like what you've just seen up on the screen before. If that's the case, you'll find a PDF copy of this in the description below. Now, just so you know, when I first started exploring this challenge, I actually didn't think there was too much to it. I couldn't really see any patterns. But as I delved in deeper into the investigation, I realized there was some really cool links to things like square numbers, triangular numbers, algebra, and even fractals, which is a really cool part of mathematics that we don't really touch on in the curriculum. Now, once your students figure out how many triangles are in their tower, I recommend they go off and start exploring how many triangles are in different sized towers and see if there's any patterns which start to emerge. To make this easier, I encourage them to probably start off at a smaller sized tower and then work their way up. So as you'll see, when you start to explore this task with your students, it's a really cool open-ended investigation, which is perfect for students from upper primary school all the way through to VCE. Now, if you're looking for other tasks just like this, I recommend you watch my video, which I made last week, which explores the mathematics of hopscotch of all things. Also, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like the Engage Me Mathematics Facebook page to keep up to date with all the videos that I'll be putting out. And of course, like always, remember to stay safe, stay healthy. My name's Tom Moore, and I'll see you next time.